Mr. Kaplan, please. Yeah. Um. Today, I came across a line in this fascism in today's Persian that got me thinking, or maybe better say, gave me a certain urus and awakening. And that was in the middle of the day today. <clears throat> and also I was just talking with the producer about a Gamoran Kedushim. I wanted to tie the two things in together. This Fasemis says, today's Parsha, Parsha Noah, in the year Tov Reish Lamed Gimel in this Fasemis, in the middle of a whole piece, he talks about the union of breeze, what it means breeze, what it means a summer of breeze. And it brings to, he says, like this, the koach ha'odom godom od. A person has very strong kochus in him. He doesn't realize what kind of kochus he has in him. And then he says, Everybody has to remember That's it. A new schira that a person has to remember. A person has to always go around remembering that he has an neshama inside of him. And this is not a simple thing. I mean, of course everybody knows that they have a neshama. It doesn't mean to remember this simple idea. It means you have to be aware of it. Like this, a person goes around. And he, and he forgets. He, he thinks he's a goof. I mean, he's a goof. And he's a sick and in yone, a goof. He's a sick and eating and drinking. And even, even learning, uh, and doing mitzvahs, it's, it's, it's also, he's, he thinks of, he relates it to his goof. But you, you forget, you have to remember that what am I? I'm an ashama. An ashama is something very high. I was, um, a few months ago, I went by one of these genesis where you, you put in money in the box and you take a safer that's uh, lying around. I don't know if Guinness is the right word, but it's a, of a place of old farm. And and I picked up the safer Shara Gilgulim with the Pirish Mosok Mitvash from Rabdoniel Frisch. He must have been a tremendous uh, mekubo. He knew all of. He knew so much, and he wrote a perishim on the Zohar. But but not stampy. He wrote simple perishim, and also he put in the the Kabbalah language what the Zohar means. Now he wrote a perish on the Shagil Gulim, and I took it. I put in a few shekels over there, and I took it. And I see that he says here in the I'm trying to look for that uh, you should you should know that it's one of the hardest farming Kabul. He says, I don't understand why, but he says it's not such a simple safer. It's uh, very complicated. So I start looking in the safers, I see that he talks this, everybody knows that a person has a nefesh ruch, neshama chai yechida. But each one of them has in it parts. Nefesh eben nefesh, ruch eben nefesh. And then the, the nefesh is from Asiya, and the ruch is from Bria. And that. that means, because you are 
a neshama, but it's not just that. It's it's a whole chain. It's a it's a chain of of of, of parts, and ruchnias dika parts that are connected to to a very very high place. And everything you do can makes a connection to a very high place. It's like it's like um, you talk on the phone. Uh, I mean, and the the. The, what we call the waves of the voice, they go to a high place, to a satellite, and from the satellite they're sent to somebody else. You can walk in the street and talk to somebody in America. I got a call from my daughter in America today. And just in the middle, I'm sitting in the car, and I got a call from her. I talked to her. And the, the call, the voice goes to me so full of myself, and you don't know how, how it's happening, how much Chochmah lies in it. You're talking over here, and it goes up, and it goes there, and it goes to other places. And uh, much more than that is the Neshama that's connected to higher and higher places. But we forget it. We have to remember we have a neshama. That means we're important. This verse says, "Koach odom gadol meod." You have a neshama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say, let's say like these. That somebody would have some kind of a gadget that he could press a button and it'll do something in the in in Iraq. It'll 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 kill a thousand people just by sitting in his room over here. It'll do some. It'll kill a thousand people. I mean, you 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 would realize that you you're powerful. And you can do tremendous things. Much much more a person can do with his neshama for good and for bad. He could make things. He he davens a good davening in the morning. He's careful not to talk in the middle of Chazor Sashat, that everybody is careful, I think, no. And not to look in a safer and to listen to Chazor Sashat and to answer Omen with Kavon. One Aniyas Omen, what does it do? It, it creates light, it gives Kach to Malachim to do things. Such Kach as a person has. And we don't even realize it, we just go by. I saw a person that came into show a while ago wearing short pants. I mean, still the knee, not real short. And, and sandals without socks. And he had a beard and face. He came from one of these yeshuvim, probably. I felt like saying, do you know where you are? You're in a shul. This is a shul. This is the house of Hashem. This is the place where we say Baruch Ato. We talk to him directly. The, the king's house. We're doing things that are so powerful, that are making such changes in the world. And you come in like that. It's mechur. How can it be that a person doesn't understand? How could a person not understand such a thing? And I'm a coward, but I should have said something. But I, I mean, then I said, next time I see him, next time I'll say something. Anyway, all that in just in one short line, this one sentence says, Torah kol ish Yisrael lis chazek v'liz kordu. You have to remember that you have in yourself a nishmas elokai. Yeah. Now, I was just talking to the producer about a Maisi Shahoya that I was in a certain show in a certain neighbor in Yerushalayim. A certain rov that says a shir Shabbos afternoon, a Gemara shir to Balabat. And he was reading the Gemara in Kedushin Chofheya Medalev. And the Gemara says, Sovi de Nezunye, the older people from Nezunye, Tamele Chachomim, they didn't come la pirke de Rav Chiste, de Rav Chiste's ship. Oh my lay. Le Rav Amnune, Rav Chiste said to Rav Amnune, Fil Saninu, go put them in Cherem. Rashi 
says they should sit in their house, but sinner, they should be buys. That's a lush needle in Talmud Chochem. And stay home, don't come. You're in Nidui. Don't come to a shiur. You missed a shiur. We're putting you in Nidui. So then also, and he said to my sir of Chimnunu went. And he said to them, My time, my lawsu rabbana lapirka, why didn't you come to the shiur? So they said, Because last time we came to the shiur, we asked him a shiur, and he didn't answer said, but so I asked him, did you ever ask me? And I didn't answer you. Okay, so they asked him to shy the evidences you so rabble bebate him out. And he made him a search and debate him what kind of thing does it have? Is it a mum shebegal or a mum that's not begal? Okay, all sugi the gemara goes over him. And this Rabbi just read the Gemara, translated it just like I just did. And he went on. And I got upset. What do you mean you go on? Don't you see my Goliath over here? Look what the Gemara is telling us. Especially you're learning with Balabatim. You have to make it interesting. You have to make it gishmak. You have to make it exciting. And then look, look what it says over here. One time they didn't come to a shir, go put them in Kharam. Kind of thing, one time, so they didn't come one time, so what? You see, look, look, look at how the Chazal understood what Torah is. You mean, you mean, you saw that Torah is being taught over here and you could miss it? Chaim is being given. Life is being given over here. And you just sit there and you stand. Of course they had excuses. And there must have been a reason for I don't know. When we talk about Chaim, it's not Shaykh excuses. There's nothing to answer. Look at that. Look at what Torah is. And what, what does he just go on and not, and not bring out and not, <clears throat> then what they answered him back is awesome I just noticed they answered him that we once asked him a silent he didn't answer us no he didn't answer because he didn't know no and actually, I think this might have to do with that question that I always ask. If somebody is, if you found something, one thing, a person made a mistake one time, did something wrong one time, do we have to puzzle the person because he did said something wrong one time? Let's say somebody who, who speaks every day, every week or something. And one time he said something strange or something crazy or he made a mistake. So do we have to pass on him because one time he made a mistake or not? So I don't know. I mean, I would say, what? Well, one time he made a mistake. I always keep saying it to my father. And we ain't done here, of course, but um, I keep saying to him. Oh, and I don't really say it to him. Uh, I, think, I think it to him. If you could do such a thing. So somebody's made one mistake. So you have to make him possible because that. So the Klausenberg Rebbe did one of very doesn't dive him this month. So you have to pass on him because of that. Went through the concentration camp, lost 11 children. And, and right away, as soon as it finished, he started building again and didn't complain and didn't be bitter. Was that tzaddik? So, what, so, so you have to criticize him because he daven late. And when we daven early, we daven. It's v'chlala, davening and davening. So what? But every year, it's, it's a little bit. You do see such a thing. One time we asked him a shayla and he didn't answer us. To finish, we're not going to this year anymore. So maybe one time he didn't know. I mean, but of course you can make chiluki and you can say that not everything is the same. I don't know.
a company the two things are connected this five sentence that I just said over that a person has to remember that he has a neshama and the glory and kedushin are connected because the union is like this when a person goes around remembering that he has a neshama so he becomes a ishchai mind in Brochus of Yudchez brings the Pesach Ben Yo Ben Yo Yodo Ben Ishchai Rav Bolim Mikavter Uyorad Vehikos Ari Besol Chabor Biyamasholik and the Gemara says what does it mean Ben Ishchai because the Tikim and Filo Ben Misosan Kruim Chaim and Tikim. Here, let me take the, take out the Gemara and look at it inside. Here's the Gemara. Brochus Yud Ches. The Gemara says, in the bottom of the Omer, Ben Yod Ben Yod Ben Ish Chai, Shafilu Ben Misoso Kore Chai. That's what it means, Ben Ish Chai. Everybody is a Ben Ish Chai, a living person. But this is Tzadikim and Filo, when they're dead, they're called Chai. But but this book is not talking when Ben Ayo, Ben Yoyoda died. It's talking while he was still alive. And on that it says Ben Ish Chai. It means he was, it's, it's a type of person. It's not just that after he died, we still call him alive. It's much more than that. He is he is a person that never dies. It means this this kind of person. He's so full of life. So they can be and cream chaim because even when they were alive, so they were always full of life. And 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 a person could be awake, and and we all suffer from this. Be awake, but he's going around like he's asleep. He's walking around in a dream, in a daze. He, he, he doesn't realize that there's so much, the world has so much in it. There's so much happening. I mean, we don't see it, but the Gemara says in Brochus, in the first barrack, that if we would have been able to see, we would see how many shading there are around us from all sides. There's so much happening in the air. I think some people can feel it. Like you go into a certain house, you can feel simcha in there. There are certain houses you go in, you can feel atzvus in there, sadness. Some houses you go in, you feel a looseness, a, a, uh, easiness and some houses you go into you feel tension tension you feel there's there's something happening in the air it's in there Ben Ishchai is a person that he never came into a situation of missing never came into a situation of of just stopping of becoming like a stone of of not thinking of not feeling of not being excited. BMS, I would say that a true tzaddik is always excited. Or 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 even if excited might be too extreme, but but he's always he's bubbling, he's 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 awake, he's feeling what's happening. He's feeling either the tension in there or he's feeling the simcha in there. He's, he's feeling what's going on around him. He goes out into the world. He sees a sun, a moon. He sees Hashem's creation. He sees a tree. I saw a picture in the book on Rabbi Victor Miller. That he's walking. He's taking a walk. He's holding his jacket in his, over his arm. He's wearing a hat. And he's, he's pointing to some kind of flowers there, pointing to the one walking with him, and, and with a smile on his face, a grin, he's showing him the flowers over here. He was a Ben Ishchai, a person that's alive, a person that feels, that sees meaning in everything. I read in this book on Rabbi Victor Miller that 
They once heard him. He was walking up the stairs from his shoulders. His ass must have been upstairs. He was walking up and holding the railing. So, he, so they heard him say, Thank you, Hashem, for making a banister over here. A banister means a railing. He felt that they're, they're the simplest thing in life. He felt it's a matana from Hashem. And I say that Kolshkin Vikalvachoma, a person that he goes to a Gomorrah, and this is a, a tremendous aitzer for everybody who learns. A person who starts, opens up a Gomorrah and starts learning, he should think, he should think to himself, these few lines that I'm learning here, there's so much in it, so much depth. So much meaning, so much holiness. I once heard Rabbi Bramsky said that he saw the, the the palace of the Queen of England. So he understood. You see a, a gate, you go into a gate. But inside is a whole palace. Every posseg in Chumash, he says, it's a gate. But there's a lot, a lot in it. Every few lines of Gemara, it's a gate to go into a tremendous amount. And it looks simple to us. We have a problem. And I, I read this someplace that the altar from Kellum said it. That we go buy pearls and we don't pick them up. We're walking by all kinds of opportunities to see so much meaning. And we just don't pick it up. And let's, I'm, when I'm talking about taking a piece of Gomorrah, and this is not the sugi itself, this is the introduction to the sugi. That who said it and what said it and how it happened that they didn't come to the shears, they told him, put them in Chayram, and he went to them. But the meanwhile, look how many Margolios are in this. And you see here what Torah is. You see how the Chazal, their Hagav, you see how the Chazal, or Machshifter, what Torah meant the Chazal, you didn't come once to one time to this year. You missed a piece of life. Or better say, you didn't understand that there's life is being given out. A new kind of life. And you just go by and don't come to it. How could you be? How could you be like that? You should be put into harem. How can a person just go by such such a beautiful line, a few lines of Gemara, so deep, so meaningful, and it's not even it's the introduction to the suki, and just go by and not say anything? The problem that we all have is that we're not a Ben Ishchai. We don't remember we have an Ashoma. If we would sit down by a Gemara and remember we have an Ashoma. And this piece of Gemara is the deepest, deepest thing that there is in the world. And we're connecting to Hashem through this piece of Gemara. We would look at it different. And that's what this Fasimah says. You have to remember you have an Ashoma. And you have to remember what Torah is. And when you'll remember the two things together, you'll come to tremendous. And I'm and and and, and more than that, you know, it brings a person to chidushe Torah because there is such a concept as chidushe Torah. Of course, you have to remember that as uh, I said, chidushe Torah and Rabbi Chaim Valozner said doesn't mean to say a chap. It means to say to clarify something. And that's given to, to real true intellectual people so they are able to appreciate the union of clarifying something even though you don't see the chap in it. But it comes from realizing what Torah is, realizing what an Ashama is, realizing the connection between the Neshama and Torah. That brings to this. And and, and once you that, so you become a Ben Ishchai, so then the Torah is Chai, so then Mamela Chidushim come, Chidushim come to the mind. The 
Chazunish says in the second Igeris, in the Igeris Chazunish, he says that that uh, to reach Chochmah you have to take a piece and, and chazer it over and over and over. And then you start seeing the, the tainug, the pleasure that there is in Limudat Torah. And I tried it many times and I felt it. You, the, the Torah is like a coals. When you look at it, you see just one little dot, a spark inside of it. But when you blow on it, the sparks become bigger and bigger and a fire jumps out. That's what you have to do with Torah. You have to blow on it and say it over and over again. And then it grows, it becomes big, a big fire. A low code why no mashem. The same thing is when a person goes in the street and he remembers, I am an Eshoma, I'm connected to some place higher. What I'm seeing around here, that's not everything. That's not the whole story. There's an Isham up there. It makes it, gives life a whole different meaning. Hashem should help us. We should be zochah, not just to give dogs, only to be mekayim what we dog. And we should really have these feelings, and then we'll be zochah to go up and up and up and connect to a higher places. Amen, amen. Thank you, Rabbi Kaplan.